Hello, in this video we're going to look at the light reflex. So essentially the mechanism as to how the pupils constrict when you shine a light to the eyeball. So in order to do so, let's just recap the essentially optic nerve pathway, so the visual pathway. So the eyeball here, the optic nerve, optic chiasm, and the optic tract to the occipital lobe. But here I'm drawing the midbrain in the center because it is important in the light reflex. The midbrain contains many structures, anatomical structures and nuclei that are important in the light reflex. From the back here, the back of the midbrain, we have the superior um, colicum, and then we have the pretectal nucleus. Um, in front of the pretectal nucleus, we have the nucleus of Edinger Westphal. Now, the nucleus of Edinger Westphal is important because it is where the ocular motor nerve cranial nerve number three. It's where the ocular motor nerve originates. Ocular motor nerve will travel along this pathway here. So ocular motor nerve um, here. Now, it's also important to know that the ocular motor nerve contains the parasympathetic nerve fibers. So the parasympathetic nerve fibers, some of them travel along the, with the ocular motor nerve. And the ocular motor nerve will travel towards the ciliary ganglion where it will synapse with another neuron. And this other neuron is then going to send this whatever signal to the uh, to the pupil. All right, so let's just zoom into the eyeball here and look at some important anatomical structures. Let's cut a cross section of the right eyeball here. Here we have the ciliary muscles. Now the ciliary muscles is important because it essentially uh, changes the shape of our, of our lens and thus how much light is coming into our eye. The iris is also very important. Now the iris is the, the color in our eye and uh, the color that makes up our eye. And the iris is important because it contains muscles and it's actually the iris that is responsible for how big or how small our pupils are. The iris contains circular or radial muscles. And now depending on what muscles are stimulated, if it's circular or radial, this will determine if the pupils are constricting or dilating. So here in this case, I'm drawing a pupil I'm drawing the eyeball and the pupils are constricting because the circular muscles here in red are constricting. So let's just uh, get a better understanding of this. So I'm going to draw three eyeballs here. The middle one is normal. On the left, we have constricted pupils. This is scientifically known as meiosis. Um, and the pupils are constricting because actually parasympathetic the parasympathetic nerve fibers are stimulating it, are stimulating the circular muscles of the iris. And the parasympathetic nerve fibers are, are coming together with the ocular motor nerve. It's traveling with the ocular motor nerve, remember. So parasympathetic causes pupils to constrict. Then on the right, we have dilated pupils. Now dilated pupils, scientifically known as, scientifically known as my mydriasis and essentially it's the sympathetic nerve that is responsible for dilation of the pupils so stimulating the radial nerves uh, the radial muscles so the radial muscles are stimulated this will cause uh, dilation of the pupils and this is due to the sympathetic nerve stimulation and we want to dilate our pupils because when we are in fight flight mode when we're trying to run away we want to see everything clearly um, and that sort of makes sense. All right. Now, when we shine a light, when we shine a light to the left eyeball here, I'm drawing. When we shine the light, this is known as direct, direct um, response. And then whatever happens to the other eyeball is known as consensual response. So when we shine a light to the left eyeball, the pupils on the left would constrict but so will the pupils on the right side. And this is known as the consensual response. Okay, now let's follow the light reflex pathway now. So we're shining a light in the left eye. When we shine a light in the left eye, the optic nerve will obviously pick this up. So here I'm drawing in blue, optic part of the optic nerve. This one, this optic nerve will carry information down along the left side and it will synapse with 
uh, another other nerves in in the lateral geniculate body, and these nerves will carry along the optic tract and down to the occipital lobe. Similarly, the others, the, the, the this orange ner uh, nerve here is part of the optic nerve, but this on this side it will actually cross over in the optic chiasm and will bring information to the other side, so to the right side, and it will sign up with the nerves along the right optic tract, and this nerve will then carry information to the occipital lobe. Now what's really important to know is that the optic nerve carrying information from the left eye, they will actually also send, bring some information and will synapse in the midbrain. It will bring the information to the pretectal nucleus here as shown. Now there are neurons in the pretectal nucleus that will receive this signal. So this neuron in the pretectal nucleus in red will then bring this information to the nucleus of Edinger-Westphal. But this neuron will not only bring this information to one side, it will actually cross over as well and bring the information to the other side, to the opposite um, Edinger-Westphal nucleus. And so, and similar thing happens um, on, the, on the right pretectal nucleus. It will bring it to the same side of the Edinger-Westphal nucleus, but it will also bring the information to the other side. It will cross over. And so, essentially, both right and left nucleus of Edinger-Westphal are being stimulated just from, um, just from the one um, eye eyeball, from the, right, from the left eyeball. And the nucleus of Edinger-Westphal is stimulated. The neurons there are stimulated particularly the ocular motor nerve, because the ocular motor nerve originates from that, nu from that nucleus. The ocular motor nerve, both on the right and left, will synapse in the ciliary ganglion with another neuron, the short ciliary nerve. The short ciliary nerve will then bring this information to the pupil, to the iris, causing the iris to constrict, essentially. And so you get pupil constriction. And that is why when you shine a light to the left eye, the left eye will constrict, the left pupil will constrict, but also the right will constrict. And thus you have a direct and consensual response. So again, just to recap, here we have the left eyeball and here we have the right eyeball, um, or the right pupil. And we're shining a light to the left eye uh, we get a direct response, so the pupils are constricting, and then we get a consensual response on the right eye. And this is when the, visual, the light reflex pathway is normal. There are no lesions. Now let's just recap the pathway again. So from the retina, the optic nerve brings this information to the pretectal nucleus in the midbrain. And then you have bilateral innervation, so we have crossing over, etc., to the edinger westphal nucleus. The edinger westphal nucleus will then send out the stimulate the, the ocular motor nerve will be stimulated, and this will the ocular motor nerve will then travel to the ciliary ganglion, where it will synapse with the short ciliary nerve to stimulate the circular muscles of the iris, thus resulting in um, pupillary constriction. So now let's see what happens when we have lesions anywhere along this light reflex pathway. Say let's just say what happens if we have a lesion on the left um, optic nerve. Well, what happens is that when we shine a lie on the left eye, because no information is being received, we will get no pupillary response on the left side. But also, we will get no pupillary constriction on the right side as well. So we don't have, so both the right and left side don't constrict. And this is because we have damage to the left optic nerve, cranial nerve number two, and thus no information is being sent towards the midbrain. And thus the light reflex is absent. Now what happens if you have a damage to the optic chiasm? Well, when we shine light on the left eye, the signal is, being, is still being sent uh, along the blue nerve because the orange nerve is damaged. 
the blue optic nerve and it will still bring it to the pretectal nucleus and it will still cross over. And so both the left and right nucleus of Eninger-Westphal are working. So damage to the optic chiasm, the light reflex will still be present. So you still see constriction of both the left and right. Now what happens if you have a lesion on the left oculomotor nerve? Well, when you shine light on the left eye, what happens is that the information is still being received by the midbrain, by the nucleus of Eringer westphal but the output, the oculomotor nerve on the left side is not working, so therefore you won't see any constriction on the left side. And so damage to the left oculomotor nerve will result in um, the direct light reflex being absent, but the consensual, consensual being present. And so you get no constriction on the left side, but you have constriction on the right side. Because the left side, the oculomotor nerve, is damaged, but the right oculomotor nerve is still working. Now what happens if you have a lesion on the right oculomotor nerve? Well, it's the same thing. So you shine a light on the left eye. The image, the information is still being received by the midbrain, by the Edinger westphal nucleus. And the oculomotor nerve um, is sending out the signal for the pupils to constrict. However, the right oculomotor nerve is not working, and so it can't tell the right pupil to constrict. Thus, you have a, thus damage to the right oculomotor nerve will result in direct response on the left side present but consensual will be absent. I hope this video made sense. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you.